Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So I just want to come here today and I had an event recently and I want to show you my portion of the event. I was very excited to present in front of a small audience of um, a little less than 20 people. It was really great for me to go out there and showcase. And what I'm speaking about today in this video is the uncommon stressors that we bring to our relationships unknowingly so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i will see you at the end i'm so happy for you guys to come out here and um i am going to strictly be talking about stress and how it is uh a, a terror really in our relationships and how to alleviate some of that stress and um first of all let me just go ahead and give you the definition of stress and what it actually means right so stress is a, a mental state that you are actually in and it's brought on by the struggles within our life and within our work and just our family environment as well right so uh, <clears throat> did you guys know that 75 to 90 percent of all of the physicians uh, visits are stress related mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. they are so do me a favor repeat after me I will not. I, I will, will not. not. <laughs> really? You do a lot? <laughs> <laughs> I will not. I'm sorry about that. I will not. I will not. not. Go to the doctor. Go, go to, to the, the doctor. doctor. For any stress related ailment. For any stress related ailment. No, no, no. Not on my watch. No, no, no. no not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So let me go ahead and give you a little background about myself. and. Actually, my friends don't even know my story and how I got to be a relationship coach, relationship expert. So, um, again, my name is Marshawn Barr, and I was actually tripped as a child. And uh, I know a lot of people really think of, like, trick. What do you mean by trick? <laughs> I was tricked as a child because I grew up with nothing but everybody being in relationships around me. Everybody was in relationship. My grandmother had seven girls. <laughs> All of them had multiple children. I was always around my first cousins my aunts, and even though they weren't all married, they were perceived in my child-like eyes, everybody was married. So naturally, as I grew up, I was like, you know what? That's the type of life that I want to live. That's, that's, that's what I dreamed, right? I wanted to be like everybody else, which is, what, what is the dream? The 2.5 kids, right? the picket fence, the house, the husband, I wanted all of that, right? But it didn't work out that way for me, <laughs> unfortunately. And like many of us, it didn't work out that way. And what happened was, I moved away at the age of 18, and I met my now ex-husband, and we got married at the age of 21. And I was happy-go-lucky because that's the life that I wanted to live. Unfortunately, what my parents did not teach me, and it's, it's really no fault of their own, right? Because you can only pass on the information that you have yourself. Right. So, <laughs> what they didn't teach me was how to actually, what, what signs to look for, or as we like to call them, red flags. Mm -hmm. How I should actually be treated as a woman. Mm -hmm. The chivalry portion of it, I, I just wasn't taught any of that stuff. So, I was taught by the school of hard knocks, like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Getting out there, bumping my head. Mm -hmm. more than one time right mm -hmm. so as I me and my ex-husband we definitely got married we stayed together and then because of the household that I grew up in <laughs> there was no dating mm -hmm. so I went from one family lifestyle into marriage after that is all now I am thrust into the dating world mm -hmm. and I was like what is this <laughs> what, what, what is this like <laughs> not the life that I imagined having. So when I would go out on these dates, I'll get past the ex-husband, go out on these dates with these guys, and I'm like, why isn't it working out? Like, what is actually happening? Unfortunately, I had to take a look in the mirror <laughs> and say, I am the only common denominator right. with all of these people. And so what I started to do was research read a lot of books, read a lot of articles, I started to do a little bit of surveys with men, I even had a chance to talk to some of my exes to find out what I could do to improve myself. Mm -hmm. So doing that, 
Now I am able to share a plethora of knowledge that I've actually learned <laughs> with some of my peers. And uh, I am, I'm very excited because as you mentioned, I have a passion for dramatically decreasing the divorce rate. And actually, if I can start with the babies when they're young and they know how to be treated, then the divorce rate can go down dramatically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it really does start in the home, but yes, we, yes. we can only pass along what we know, yes. right? Yes. So I wanted to break the generational curse mm -hmm. and figure out what I needed to do. And now I have an infant 15 months, I want to be able to pass along that information to her. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the actual areas in our relationship that uh, stress is actually plaguing, all right? The uncommon areas, actually, let's say that. <coughs> Excuse me. Bear with me. I'm going to try not to have a cough attack up here. <laughs> all right, so the very first one is the beautiful word that we all know of, nagging. Mm -hmm. Nagging is something, anybody can relate to the word? <laughs> Y'all know about this word, nagging? Okay, all right, all right. So, nagging. Nagging is something that definitely plagues our relationship. It actually increases our stress levels, as we talked about. And one of the things that stress actually does is it pushes your partner completely away from you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and nobody wants to deal with a nag, as they always say, right? So you want to draw your partner in. You want to feel more connected with your partner. And so what you have to do is find a way to stop nagging. You really do. And according to a Danish study, they followed both men and women, excuse me, over a 10-year period. And what they found is that those people that were in a stressful uh, relationship all those years actually died early. And not 100% of them, but it's definitely a large percentage of them actually was passing away with men being affected just a little bit more than women. So we got to find a way to stop all of the nagging. The second stressor in our relationships is not having those tough conversations. We're not having the tough conversations because we're kind of scared that an argument is going to ensue, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not really so much of what the actual topic is. It is just we feel like our um, spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, that they're going to come to you in a an ungodly manner. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and they're speaking to you very disrespectfully, mm -hmm. right? And so we want to get that under control as well. We don't, we want to have the tough conversations. We don't want to um, not have the tough conversations because it actually, uh, resentment starts to build up and it starts to fester and, and when it does finally come out, it's horrendous <laughs> when it does come out. So we have to find ways to just be respectful, but have the tough conversations. Unfortunately, another reason why we don't want to have the tough conversations is because the person really can start fighting or uh, uh, below the belt, right? We start hitting below the belt. That's the right. word I'm looking for, hitting below the belt. And we just don't want to hit below the belt. We, literally, you want to be as respectful as you can with your partner. So now, the next thing, stress related. <laughs> Why are you looking like that? <laughs> it's all of the complaining that we actually do. Anybody can relate to complaining? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So you don't want to complain as much as you... Here's the thing. When you're complaining, <laughs> you're, you are not problem solving. That's right. right. Right? So you want to try to solve problems instead of complaining. Mm -hmm. And actually what they, what they found out is another research uh, study that they did, which is the people that actually argue, they are a lot happy, happier, I should say, when they do argue, but in a respectful manner, mm -hmm. versus those couples who try to hold back, not having the tough conversations, or trying to hold it all in where the resentment is building up. So if you have the argument, per se, I personally like to just call them discussions, but people can relate to the word argument, mm -hmm. right? So as long as you are opening up your mouth and being very uh, open and honest about what you need, what you expect from your partner, things can work out. Right? Another thing that we do is accuse. Right? We accuse. <laughs> when we have no evidence of uh, what's actually happening, it's, it's something that's really all in our minds. Right? It's something that, and it's, it's not to say that you um, 
didn't understand or see something that was bothering you about your partner. But usually you don't have all of the evidence to pull it together to understand what was actually going on with them. So then you're starting to accuse your partner and things are starting to go down the tube. You are building up the resentment. Y'all both looking at each other, <laughs> upside each other's head, right? <laughs> and this stuff is not going well for either one of you. Again, increasing those cortisol levels, increasing those stress levels. And I don't know, this is kind of a fun fact. <laughs> a lot of um, people that are in stressful relationships actually hold on to the fat. They hold on to their fat, which is that cortisol. And when your cortisol levels are increased, you're holding on to the fat. And so you want to decrease the cortisol level. That's actually going to help melt some of that fat away. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't say all of the fat. Mm -hmm. J just the stress <laughs> fat. Just the stress <laughs> fat, all right? right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, what, what's that? What's that? Belly fat. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The belly fat. We want to go ahead and get rid of that. Yeah. All right. Another thing that we actually do is... Are you okay? <laughs> we, we actually accuse our partners as well that kind of goes into the assuming we accuse them without having all of the information is building up the resentment in our relationships and we can kind of scale back on a lot of that stuff if we just open up our mouths and ask the questions mm -hmm. so just, just consider this a man and woman are sitting on the couch they're watching a movie hanging out, things are going well he gets up to go to the restroom a text message happens to come in. It is a picture of another woman. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> picture of another woman coming in. But he's, he's in the restroom when this actually happens. Mm -hmm. But by the time he comes back, the wife never mentions it because she happened to look over at his phone and was sitting there, right? It wasn't that she was even snooping. She happened to look over. She's seen a picture of this other woman, but she doesn't bring it up. And now she's letting it fester. Right. Mm -hmm. She goes to bed. She don't say anything. She was waking up. She went to work. She didn't say anything. And now she got home and she just can't hold it in. No <laughs> and by the time he walk in, guess what happens? Yeah. <laughs> and when all of that is occurring, yes. the husband is actually just standing there looking at her. And what happened is he said, you know what? You're right. I was actually going to tell you about that picture on the phone. What I actually found out is that this is my long lost sister. And I was going to tell you about all of this information once I gathered some more information. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff actually is just building up. She's accusing and assuming everything, right? Mm -hmm. So she assumed and accused them of two things, at least in her head. Number one, who the woman on the phone was. Mm -hmm. And then number two, that he was actually cheating on her. Because let's just, let's be real. That's what she was going with it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. That's what she was going with it, right? <laughs> Another thing that we actually do, I'm going to move on. We allow too many people into our relationships. That's right. Right. We allow too many people into our relationships. That's right. I understand that we have to vent sometimes and we just need to get it off our chest. What my suggestion is to leave that area to one or two people or go ahead and talk to God about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need somebody in front of us to get it off our chest, right? Mm -hmm. But we allow, we want to tell my mama, mm -hmm. your brother, your sister, your auntie, your cousin, your uncle. <laughs> Everybody that's going to listen to your relationship woes is who you throwing all of your relationship issues mm -hmm. on. And then what you have to think about, they are going to definitely judge me, but they're, they're definitely going to start giving you some information you're going to start taking on what they thought about the situation as well so have you ever um noticed that sometimes when you're having an issue with your with your man your spouse whatever right you're thinking about calling your friend but but before you even call your friend to vent you're saying this this is really not that bad right we can get past this but i need to get this off my chest right i just need to get it out by the time you get off the phone with that friend, <laughs> you ready to go stab your spouse. Right. You ready to go pack their bag. Put a blank. You ready to just, just go at this relationship by yourself and just throw in the towel. Say, nope, I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> and what you have to realize is sometimes these friends, even though friends are bringing the unknown stress and unwanted stress, they don't even know that they're bringing stress to your relationship. Mm -hmm. You also have to remember that sometimes your friends can be, and, and your family, sometimes they can be a little bit miserable. Yeah. And has anybody heard of that saying, misery loves company? Yeah. Yeah. Misery yeah. loves company. Yeah. So sometimes you have to realize 
who you're telling your information to. Absolutely. You do. You have to realize who you're sharing all of this information with. Yes. And um, what you can actually do once you get off the phone with that person. Because you need to vent. More than likely, they took over the conversation because they needed to tell you all the stuff that they needed to say right. about you and your man. So when you, when you started off, it was your conversation. Right. But by the time you got on the phone, it was their conversation. So now I'm mad. Right. And now you're mad, which is why you're ready to go home and stab the spot. Right. But don't do it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right? All right. So, um. You have to just be willing to understand who you're telling your information to and just know that misery loves company. And you also have to, uh, how you can tell that the person that you're dealing with or telling your information to is a little bit miserable and they want your company. Mm -hmm. They always talk negative about any and everything. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what situation you bring to them. You can be happy-go-lucky. They will find something to be so, negative yes. about. Uh -huh. yes. So those are the people yes. you want to stay away from. Yes. You want to stay away from those people. You want to gather and, and surround yourself with all of the people that are positive. That's always going to lift you up. They might have been there, done that, depending on the situation. Those are the people that you want to surround yourself to. Uh, uh, with. Excuse me. All right. The last and final thing that we actually do in our relationships to increase the stress levels is we are very fearful. Mm -hmm. We are, and all of that actually surrounds everything that I brought up. You're accusing, you're fearful. Not having the tough conversations, you're fearful of what that conversation is going to bring or how the other person is going to react. Mm -hmm. Everything is tied around fear. So now I am going to give you a few areas on how to go ahead and elim eliminate or at the very least decrease your stress level. So the very first thing I must tell you about is to keep a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. Keeping a gratitude, anybody heard of a gratitude journal before? Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 okay. So basically a gratitude journal is when you are writing down you can do it every day. You can do it whenever you feel like it. But what it is is that you're writing down specifically what you are grateful for. So you can say, I'm grateful for my children. I'm grateful for breathing. I'm gra you, anything that you could think about to be grateful for, this is what you're writing in this journal. That's actually going to help decrease that stress level for you. Okay. All right? Another thing that you could do is take a gratitude walk with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. The gratitude walk is you and your spouse walking down the street in the park, wherever you want to be, just getting out in the fresh air, and you guys are telling what you are grateful for with each other. Mm -hmm. Honey, I'm so happy and grateful that you take out the tra trash right. without me having to tell you. Mm -hmm. Honey, I'm so happy that you put down that toilet seat. Right. Honey, I'm so happy that you <laughs> put on that cap on the toothpaste. <laughs> I'm so happy that you and grateful that you take care of the children. Anything that you can think about because you're trying to build the connect the connection between you two, you're trying to keep the outside forces outside of your world, right? So y'all two can lean on one another. Another thing that you can actually do is say I'm sorry and say it often. And absolutely say it like you mean it. Right. Right? <laughs> Another thing you can do. Laugh and laugh often. I like this one because I'm a big jokester. <laughs> so laugh and laugh often. Another thing to keep the stress levels down is to stay away from the I'm right, you're wrong party. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter how right you are. That's right. You don't have to always tell that you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guess what? I'm right, I'm right, you're wrong, you're wrong. You don't have to always do that. You want to keep the stress levels down, right? Sometimes being in relationships, you really have to walk away from conversations. Mm -hmm. You do. And it's okay to walk away. You don't have to be right all the time, even if you are right. Your spouse does not have to realize. And trust me, your spouse remember what you said, and they are happy that you didn't bring up the I'm right, you're wrong syndrome that we have. All right? <laughs> Another thing that you can actually do is just make sure that you are saying thank you. That kind of goes into gratitude, but just make sure that you are saying thank you and being appreciative of your partner and everything that they are bringing to the table. And finally... You can talk to someone like me, a coach, <laughs> your therapist, your priest, your preacher. Don't look down on therapy if you need it. Because a lot of us, um, especially in our community, we kind of look down on therapy. If you need it and you want to keep your relationships together, then get the therapy. Mm -hmm. Go talk to the coach. Mm -hmm. Do what you need to do. So now, 
what I have to offer, right? <laughs> some of you, some of you guys were asking about the pamphlets that I have back there. So, for the price of ninety-seven dollars, I'm offering you three things. I have an online ten-week course that is called "Creating Your Best Relationship Ever." Also, I'm offering with that course three coaching sessions from me. So, I would want to talk to you in the beginning of that course, midway through, mm -hmm. and then finally at the end of the course. And then also the pamphlet that I have in the back is actually a reference guide for you guys to reference. <laughs> and I made it small enough for it so it can be pocket sized. And some of the information that's actually on there is how to make sure that your relationship thrives. How to be happy within your relationship and just in life in general. And then how to have some of the tough, tough conversations. How to, be, how to communicate effectively. So if any of you guys are interested in that, I will be back at my table. I thank you so much for coming out. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And yes, yes, you guys made me happy. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for making it this far. I'm so happy that you stuck around to hear the uncommon stressors that we bring into our life. It's just some things that we don't necessarily think about. So go ahead and clean those things up. Get as many people as you can out of your relationship. Hear what your partner has to say. Take it all in and really, really start to be very respectful to one another. And so you guys can... Uh, decrease your arguments, but understand and communicate with one another and just be able to be that much happier and connect with one another. Definitely go ahead and give me thumbs up if you like this video. Of course, hit the red subscribe button if this is your very first time here or the icon with my lovely face because here at I Love Me Me Me, I am supplying you guys with the tips and tools in order to have a happy, healthy, romantic relationship so we can decrease that divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. I will see you deuces.